tapping out sound Can you understand my code? Flashing lights You still you don't know Touch my body It's highs and lows Read me like braille Don't be blind to my woes Good afternoon. Thanks for your people for responding to me. All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. Perfect. Um, thank you all for being here and welcome to the Art and Bourgeois Cypher Sessions here. Uh, those who know me, my name is Darius Daughtry. I'm the founder and artistic director for Art Reveals Project. It's a monthly event that we do. Uh, I'm just happy that you're in the space and this month specifically celebrating all the beautiful women in our lives, present and past. We thank you for being here. So, we like every event, every one of these, we like to start us off with um, an opportunity for us to get grounded, get our minds right, our spirits right, and the space to be open and receive whatever is happening. So, I'm going to call up a wonderful young lady friend of mine to help us get into that space. So, please welcome Ms. Veronica Winter of Intentionality Wins to help us get in that space. So I appreciate the opportunity to ground us to do some visualization and really have an opportunity to open our hearts and minds to all of the amazing things that we're going to experience today. So I'm going to ask if everyone can find a comfortable position in their seat. If there's anything in your hand, you might want to put it to the side. So you can place your hands on your lap or down at your sides. We're going to start with some soft belly breathing, which is just an opportunity for us to quiet our mind, quiet our hearts, deactivate our stress response, and then we'll take a moment to kind of visualize for ourselves, okay? So if everyone can close your eyes or find a soft gaze, and slowly breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. With every inhale, allowing your belly to expand. And with every exhale, allowing your belly to flatten. Continue deep belly breaths, filling your belly with air. And fully exhaling for your belly to flatten. Continue with your soft belly breaths. In through your nose, out through your mouth. As thoughts come, let them come. Acknowledge them and return your attention back to your breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. As you breathe, with your belly filling with air, you're maximizing the oxygen reaching the bottom of your lungs. Activating the vagus nerve, which wanders up through your belly, into your chest, up to your brain, into your central nervous system. Calming your flight or fright response, otherwise known as your stress response. As you breathe in through your nose, and out through your mouth. Continue with your deep breaths, and now start to visualize yourself. Visualize the best version of yourself. What are you feeling as the best version of yourself? What are you doing as the best version of yourself? See yourself in a space that allows you to be free, to be you. Notice not only how you feel and what you're doing, but notice who may be surrounding you. And 
as you see the best version of yourself. Pay attention to those things in your life now that welcome you to that visualization. Actions you may take, steps on your path. Now slowly repeat after me, I choose peace. Slowly return your attention back to the present space, noticing your feet on the floor, noticing the weight of your arms, noticing the light as you open your eyes, and noticing how it feels to be present in the moment. Thank you for the opportunity to connect. That's nice. Thank you to our Dales Project for allowing us to be in this space. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Dodger as he celebrates Yeah. So thank you for joining us. Just 
Help them going down. Help them going under. Can anybody hear me? Hello, hello. Can anybody hear me? Oh. Hello, hello. I'm calling out, calling out to anyone who listens. Calling out, calling out. Ready. Let's see, she's already been up here. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, suck my say. All right. Uh, show some love, make some noise for Ms. Yvonne Prosper as she comes up. Make some noise. Make some, I know y'all know y'all need to do this stuff, but y'all can still come. I know those cookies are good. Those cookies are good. That's good. How y'all feeling? Good. Yeah? Where are my women at? I see y'all. I don't hear you though. Where are my women at? It's our month. It's our month. Um, and um, only because Daughtry asked. I said, okay, let me do a couple of pieces because I'm always in retirement. What I'm retiring from, I have no idea. <laughs> um, but uh, I wanted to share these uh, two, piece, two pieces. And let me just tell you that really quick. Um, we're, best, we're besties now because we're following each other on Instagram, so you and I, yes. Oh, you forgot we're besties. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, but I, I, I was looking at the lineup. Connie had an opportunity to kind of uh, create like a, a, a repost on Instagram of like all, the entire lineup. And I was like, okay, yes, sis. Every single person I was, I started following, if I didn't know, uh, learned about them. And I've been just really really pushing this event like oh my gosh if you guys want to hear some, from some powerful women make way to emoji sessions because i was just so clap it up for the honorable guests all right so the theme is the image of black women in society and so i do have a side piece but i wanted to do this other piece that would really really um, resonating with me. It's called uh, He Couldn't Enough. He couldn't hug me enough. He couldn't cave into the softness of my warm shoulders enough. He couldn't shower me enough with his tears. He couldn't gather enough water from his eyes I couldn't catch. He couldn't speak to me with a broken voice enough. He couldn't whisper gasps of air and cries in his phrases enough. He couldn't be silent enough, speechless enough. He couldn't expect more love from me enough. He couldn't request more donations of my time enough, more thinking of him enough, more extending of my black girl soldier enough. He couldn't require more women from me enough. He can't allow me moments to make him forget the pain enough, make him smile enough, make him chuckle enough, but there enough be there enough to capture a different element of his pride. He couldn't expect me to catch him as he falls to his knees enough, because I am not enough. Of the thing that he needs to mend the hold, sitting in his heart of hearts, not even the doctors can open up his chest and find the right ventricle to take out what that could stop the cut that he's experiencing or the shudder that wakes him at night to his void. So to that, he can't ask me to hold him in place enough. He couldn't ask of more time to be wrapped up like a sling to a broken bone enough. He has a companion whenever he should need it. Where he shouldn't, I wouldn't. He couldn't need me enough. He couldn't even woman, I, he couldn't even woman me up enough. If I couldn't catch his rhythm, he still couldn't ask me to stop dancing. He couldn't be stronger enough to trust himself in my arms, so I just strengthen up, shape to shape shift until it's enough. Thank you. All right, let me hear my black women one more time. All right, so uh, no disclosures, just do the piece. No disclosures. <laughs> black women, I know what they say. 
I know what they see. I know how they do. You know how they feel. Black women pass you by and smell your amazing grace. They quickly fill up the air with negative themes because the reenactment of lies pro professing who they will you to be has to be more prominent than the goddess they know lighted in her earthly shoes. Your woman has been added to the permanent induction, has been added as a permanent induction to the equation of the sacred geometry. They just keep on making them. Your woman, black woman, geometrically destined to grace the stages and pavements, seen and unseen, black woman. Wave your hot and top Venus so high that their hands can see. Or run your finger through your underground railroad tracks, weave through their madness, knowing being black woman ain't genetically proportioned nor fair. But it's worth every moment. Showing off your warrior. That black woman need not prove. There's something about you, black woman. Carry on that black processional. Stir up these spirits, black woman. I know what they say. Black woman, I know what they do. Black woman, I know what they see. Black woman, I know what they feel, black women. Walking through, in and out of these spaces, the motherland glistening off your forearm, your forehead, your eyelids, your nature. They can't figure out how to carry the sun in the same veins as you, ooh, black woman. I know how they do. And if you unbuckle that fury of slick black talk ponytail, if you raise an eyebrow, there begins a tornado, quick and destructive. If you turn from that grin and open your mouth, it is the launch of a nuclear missile unable to be shielded from black women who have been framed. Telling you you have no credit, but use your thoughts, your body, your hair follicles, your scientific binary sacred metrics as the, as the views for their profits. It's all games. Black women, I know what they thirst for. I know what they taste. I know what they embrace. I know what they chase. Black women, I know they want to touch. Black women, oh, and how much you know they want to feel. Black women, those S, E, Y, X, back chromosomes, pheromones popping right off of you like, whew. They secretly have an allegiance to you. It's so hard not to choose you, black women. Your wound has birthed has birthed these continents, black women. Your bosom has laid them to rest, and the measurements of your chest cannot fill up the cup of the many nations runneth with your prominent nutrients provider. Depleted of your nutrients to prosper families, sanctions, and foreign nations, black women, why did your body come so equipped with so much definition? Even if the stereotypes is not of you, you carry so much rhythm that ripples through every type of heartbeat to the heartstrings of men who lie about who you are through stereo. Loud enough to overshadow you, yet you stay in charge, using all five senses, ejecting, rejecting, remixing the images zookeepers portray to so many onlookers, so you listen to ghosts, as they are the only ones unafraid to love you openly in the night and Ishtar candles light up the altar you prepare to reopen the blind eyes of your existence. Black woman, who you truly are and can be again, is right on your fingertips. Press your thumbprints in your oils. Press it upon your forehead between your eyes. Go scream at the moon over the ocean. The wind there can carry your absent forefathers' missions and the ocean water can baptize and cleanse the false ideals of black women. Loosen the grip of society. Detox from their macular degeneration. Say your name instead of their label, black woman, because who are they to state that all you are is just a black woman? We let no one contain us. You need a name, call us black galaxies. Yet to be completely revealed as if anyone can understand all of the elements made of the box of a black woman. Then you will not fear nor respect the items that spill out the Richter scale of spells, fears, observations, and ideas, cutting down all within its path. Even when you are hurting black galaxy, switch the fork, focus. Learn new in ingredients to piece up together where your city is burning. Recognize the cycle. The only way to break you is to splice you into fraction, pre pretenses, false descriptions, manipulative judgments, misinformation, and through false teaching. They cannot free you from black woman.
You are always free, Black Galaxy, with the community ready to uplift children. Look around. Is that now not what they do? Women need silence to progress. Look around. The only people they seem to want to talk about, no matter what, is you. No matter what they say, women, we need each other. This is not a mantra, Black women. This is a plea. That honest, that hopes to gravitationally pull you towards the force you truly are. Stop letting them tear us away, especially from another woman, from being the rock for each other's pebbles, from renewing our relationship with our building blacks, our black brothers, built upon our intrinsic complexities, black women. You are unique for reasons beyond human understanding. Commit the treason that releases you from the frenemies supporting separation. Only then can the picture become clear. Strength only comes in black women. Linked together with that central nervous system named for now, black women. Thank you. Uh, just very recently, so I'm so glad she did. So please make some noise for Miss for Dr. Kim D. Harris. When the mother and her 
children were great because it was their assignment. You see, in Africa, everyone has an assignment because we live with purpose. Okay? And their assignment was to sing and wake up the village to start their day being productive and being connected and loving each other. Every morning they were so accustomed to hearing the drum, hearing the shaking egg, and hearing Higi and Hawatoto sing. Windete, yindete, yung luki. Windete, yindete, yung luki. Atoro, jeneiwe. Mingo, magusete. But this morning, Yeye looked for her wife, talked to the word I hear. She heard so much commotion outside, and when she peeked out, she saw all the brothers and sisters in her village ripping and running, crying and screaming, and she was a little confused, like, where's my children? And Yago, Akila, Take, take, please, I eat up. Couldn't find them anywhere. And one of her sisters from her village saw her looking so confused and came up to her and said, Yeah, yeah, don't, don't you know what happened? And she says, No, I, I'm looking for my Watoto. She hugged Yeah, yeah. And she said, Yeah, yeah, in the night when we slept. Big ships came across the waters and snatched our children while we slept. Now, Ye Ye, hearing this, you know, she needed a few minutes to process what she was hearing. What do you mean big ships came in the night and snatched our babies? Snatched our Watoto. Big ships and carried them where? And folks say, because I told you it's what the folks said to me that I'm sharing with you, said that for days they saw Ye Ye by the water's edge, just walking, just praying, throwing shells and singing and just crying and trying to figure out a way to find her Watoto who have lost their way home. And as a mother, you may realize it may have encountered, maybe you haven't. There comes a time when sometimes your children will wander and lose their way home. But as a mother, we know that we will go find our children and return them home. So folks say that after days and days that when they looked, the sun was just rising, just coming off of the ocean's water. They saw a silhouette of Ye Ye with her head held high, and folks say she was walking across the waters. They'd never seen that before. So all of the village stood there in awe, in a daze, as little by little, Yay, yay, faded away out of their view. Now, yay, yay, on her mission, and those of you who know a black mother, that when she makes up her mind, she's filled with kuji chakalia. She's filled with self-determination. And I don't know about your mama, but I know my mama and my grandmother, my nana, they make things happen when it seems like nothing can happen. This is the energy, the spirit that Ye Ye walked with. And folks say the first place that she came to was a place called Haiti. Some people say Haiti, but really it's Haiti. And there, amongst the crowd, Ye Ye looked. And she, she couldn't understand the words that they were saying, but saw so many people that looked just like her brothers and sisters from her village deep in the heart of Africa. She stood a 
amongst them as the crowds moved around her. And Yeh Yeh said, In Yako, in Yako, it's Yeh Yeh, I'm here. And she and there, to her surprise, stepped forward her son in Yako, which means godlike, friendly, understanding champion. And then in Yako said, Yay, 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 it's me, I'm here. And folks say that yay, yay, and y'all grab each other and hug in a circle of love. And folks say she grabbed in Yako's hand, and they too began to walk across the waters until she came to a place called Jamaica. And there she saw enough people that look just like her brothers and sisters in her village in Africa. She never knew. And there again, she stood amongst the people and she and Yako held hands and they sung. Akila, Akila, it's yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yako echoing on the side, and in Yako. And there, amongst that crowd, can you imagine what they felt when they saw Akila step forward? Yay, 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 in Yako, it's Kiki, I'm here. And folks say they grab each other in a circle of love, and they spun around until they grabbed each other's hand and began to walk across the waters until they came to a place called United States of America. And there, amongst the people, Yeye and Yako and Akila saw many people that looked like their brothers and sisters, but they saw so many different colored people, and they just never saw that before. But it didn't matter because Yeye was determined Again, the three of them sung. Aida, Aida, it's yay, yay, I'm here. As you heard it, Yako and Akila say, Yako and Kiki is here. And a that crowd, oh, yay, yay, thought she was going to fall out when she saw her baby. Yay, 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 it's Edie, I'm here. And folks say on well, that day, just as the sun was beginning to set, that yay took her baby's hands and they hugged each other in a circle of love and began to walk to the water's edge and walk across the water to their rightful place of home, of Africa the motherland. And folks say that when they arrived, that the whole village was there drumming and singing and the dancers was dancing and it was just, oh, yay, yay has come. The chief Nana was there and he let all of the brothers and sisters know from this day forward, our colors, I cannot take a chance of we leaving from Africa and not knowing who we are when we see each other. The colors are yellow, red, black, and green. So no matter where we go out of Africa, no matter where we go throughout the world, throughout the diaspora, when we see those colors of red, yellow, black, and green, you know that's your sister. You know that's your brother, because those colors are representative of our struggle, of the black experience of mothers. Red is for the blood of our people. Yellow is for that golden, ah, healing power of the sunshine, as well as the gold that's embedded in the nooks and crannies of Africa. And the green is for the luscious land where any 
folks tell me you can and your spit will grow. It's so lush and rich and just ready for life. And the black is for who? Oh, we whisper it like that. The black is for who? The people. The people. The people. The people. Your people. My people. Our people. So remember, no matter where you go on the face of the earth, remember this story. Remember the, the strength of the yay yay, of the mother looking for her children and returning them home. And remember, when you see the colors, like the sister has over there, that you know that that's yours, that's ours. And on that note, can I have everyone just extend their arms out to the sides, cross them in front of you, and give yourself a hug. And on the count of three, let me hear you say Ubuntu. One, two, three. Ubuntu, again. Ubuntu, one more time. Ubuntu. I am because you are. You are because I am. In unity, there is strength. Umoja. Ashe. One more time, Dr. Kim Harris. Taking us back to the motherland, making us feel connected to our roots, where it comes from, where we are, where we're going, all that good stuff. How we feeling? Yeah. Good, good. That's all. That's, that's all. That's all we do. We just want us to feel good. Maybe learn a little something in the process. Experience a little something in the process. All right. So now we're gonna turn up a little bit. We're gonna ask an amazing young lady vocalist to come up and do her thing. Where are you going, that chair, man? You go with the chair, Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, and she'll tell you about some things she has going on, so uh, hopefully you can support what she has. So please make some noise for the lovely La Vie. Anybody got stuff to do? A lot of stuff? Nobody? That's good. She's looking like me. No, let's relax. It's Saturday. Let's just enjoy the vibrations. Once again, my name is La Vie. That is translated the life in French. And I am of Haitian descent. I'm very grateful, very, very grateful to be here with you today. Um, my tracks were not, uh, I'm going to just tell y'all what's happening. My tracks were not um, named. So we're going to just see what comes up first. Let's go. This one goes out to my queens, you know what I mean. Treat me like a queen, a queen. Parfait with mon sachery. If you're going to love me, oh, you love me, boy, just make sure you love me right. Because I am a queen, a queen. Girl, you can win in one night. I fool me with your lies. Oh no, I'm not that type of girl. I'm not the one you call 3 a.m. in the morning. Just because you're lonely. Oh no. Girl, that 
that your wine and your dime take me for a good time. Introduce me to your mama. Call me when you want to plan forever. It's not just a physical thing. Mentally poor, you have to stimulate. You better know, say I'm a lady. to all the queens in the place. So just how, so just how this beautiful queen right here um, represented and talked about the, the humans, our humans. I have three humans and my oldest is 19 years old and um, I had her in mind when I decided to write this song because a lot of times we allow certain things and it starts from a young age we have to, we have to put our standards up, you know? Somewhere, you gotta have a standard, you know? And you gotta stand by that standard and follow that standard. Don't just fall for anything that anybody gives you and does to and for you. You gotta just, you gotta know what's good for you. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to encourage my, my human and just let her know that she is all right, she's amazing, and that she shouldn't just be settling for men. Next song. Snap a bit like this. Y'all got me? Girl, 
again that my name is Lavi and I'm very very thankful to be here with y'all today. Um, I have an event coming up of celebrating also women, Women's Month, my History Month. Um, it's called Woman and um, if you follow me at Lavi Music, L-A-V-I-E Music, L-A-V-I-E Music, L-A-V-I-E Music. Uh, you can see the flyer, you can uh, click on the link there and uh, get some tickets. It's for next weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. On the Friday evening, it's a concert, right? Open up with the live music vibrations. On the Saturday, day of workshops, we have someone speaking about yoni health, mental health, spiritual health, beauty. Uh, we got fitness, we're gonna be dancing. Oh, it's gonna be a vibe, right? And <laughs> the best part, we've got food, guys. <laughs> there will be food. And then on the Sunday, we have a production called Woman. Right? And it's going to be five different women speaking on their experiences as a woman. As women, we encounter a lot, right? And we, not to say that the men don't either, because there's pressures that are on them that cannot, that we cannot, you know, fathom, right? But the woman, I honor you. I honor every woman, every young woman in this place today. Every woman, every woman. You too, babe. She over there said, like, girl, I'm ready to go. You ready to go? No? Okay, it's good. Get thanks. So I'm really, really thankful for uh, all the women that I have in my life. Growing up, I didn't have much connection. And I think a lot of women didn't have much connection with women. But I'm grateful that today there is great connection. And I want to ask y'all for a favor that you will, um, I'm going to let the song say. Go ahead. Yeah. 
space and we're gonna have a kind of a real open discussion I got some guiding questions and some thoughts or whatever but I, I'm really interested in what everyone else has to say and how we can contribute to the conversation and uh, make sure that there is intentionality and that we, we grab something and something is taken away from being in this, in this experience so if everybody would please kind of come help us join and, and make this circle a circle Older women, 
it, it doesn't matter. It's we're all just we're priceless. To me, what it means to be a woman, to me, it's pain. I feel like the strength of a woman comes from pain. And I mean, it could be something simple as, like we, a lot of us are saying, you know, having a menstrual every month. We're, in, we're going through pain. You know, when it comes to our children leaving the home or our children, you know, succumb to the streets or succumb to traumas, you know, just by being black, it comes from pain. And a, and a lot of people in society likes to talk about, you know, when, you know, Black women, we're so strong, we're so strong. That strength comes from bearing pain. You know, I feel like, I feel like, sometimes I feel like the purpose of being a woman is to actually go through pain. Because through the pain comes the strength, and through the strength comes, I don't know, enlightenment and joy. Yeah, so that's, that's interesting. Like, I think, like, because that you said, like, if, like equating being a woman to, to pain and then the idea of, of being strong, right? And I've, I've been in conversations a lot, and the idea of, like, yo, damn, we, we, we don't want to be strong all the time. You know, and, and can we just, can I just leave? Can I, can I just leave? So, what, so, but then at the same time, it's unfortunately, you feel like, well, if, if you aren't, as this woman are not that strong thing, then things will fall apart. Things are around her will fall apart. Um, and so I like I wonder though, you know, is that where where it is? And it's kind of leads into another question. Like where is that what is, is that true? Or is that what we've just established how society and, and the society, this patriarchal society, has kind of created this this um, this idea that be a woman, you bear all the brunt of this take all, all all of this, all the darts, you know, you, you hold up the shield and we, as men, just kind of reap the benefits of it. I don't know. So is it true that that women are supposed to feel all of the pain? Right. Right. Come on in. Wherever you are. We just, keep, we just keep being good at it. Right. I think, I think that uh, those of us that are teachers, we know that a lot of the times our classroom place where it's a dumping ground for the kids that are problematic because we can handle them. So if you transfer that thought, it's like women through the generations, they take on so much, black women take on so much, um, or I should say women in general take on so much because we're good at doing it. And, mm -hmm. and um, when things seem to fall apart for the men, they're like, oh God, call a woman yeah, in yeah, and, yeah. and, 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 and you, you can pull yeah. any part of life, 1800, and, um, you know, biblical times, anything, and it's the woman that, I don't want to use the word, cleans it up, but she holds it together. She holds it together. Yeah. Yeah. I think she finds the answers. Because to be honest, like sometimes you're in pain, but because so much is going on, you don't realize it until you're not anymore. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like you reflect, you're like, oh my God. That was that was crazy, but because we are who we are, it's like we work through the pain, you know, and you feel it to a certain extent, but I think you reflect on it more after the fact. It's just like our when something happens, you just kind of go into the mode, like you were saying, how we yeah. fix things, we, be, we transform, become these yeah. things, and it's like that's just like second nature, and you just do it. Yeah. But I think right now, I wonder if just, you know, like my, my aunt or grandma, like just any perspective from you know, because I'm not going to tell you ages, you know, <laughs> but you should be proud. Huh? <laughs> it don't matter. It don't matter, right? So my grandma's 82, right? And so, yeah. And so, like, you know, her life is, you know, she's experienced and been a woman, you know, a long time. You know, you know what I'm saying? A long time, right? So, um, and she's seen a lot and experienced a lot and, you know, seen different ideas and trends and the way that, you know, people kind of navigate it. So I just wonder, you know, you know, um, you, Grandma or Monty, like if you have just, just some thought about just today versus yesterday, you know, and, and what it feels like and looks like to be a woman, and, you know, and that means, you know, you want to talk about it, talk bad about it. <laughs> uh, well, like, 
like my grandson said, you know, I've been here a long time, 82 years, and uh, seen a lot of changes, a lot of changes, and a lot of them had me very upset. I was sick. You don't want me to go well, there. Well, well, you don't want me to go there. You're going to have to get all of that, right? <laughs> Speaking talking about love, a lot of young people, they don't show older people, senior citizens they call us, they don't show any love, they don't show any respect. Now when I was a child, if I didn't show my mama, my grandma, my great grandma respect and said something out of turn, I'd be getting up off the floor. <laughs> You and my mom, she had, she slapped me when I was mar married, and I said something out of turn, and my mom slapped me right in my face. <laughs> See, but these a lot of the kids these days they don't give you no respect. Mm. They don't give you no respect. They don't open the door for you. I was going in the shoe store a while back. And I'm opening the door, got a walker trying to open the door. I opened the door, this man got in front of me, walked right up in front of me. No respect, no respect. I'm not saying everybody like that, you know. But it's so many of them that don't show seniors respect. But it, okay. So true. Now somebody was parked in the car and I was going in the store. I was there. Married, me and my husband will actually be celebrating 40 years together in a few weeks. Yeah. Um, we have four adult children. 40, yes. <laughs> yes, 82. Yeah. yeah, 35 married in May. Yeah, 40 together. <laughs> Yeah, 40 together next month and 35 married in May. But um, we have four adult children, the youngest is 32. And what I do know is even though what my children have seen over the years, what my grandchildren have seen over the years with me and my husband relationship, still seems not to have an impact on what they go for in their lives, you know, what they're gonna take, what they're not gonna take, no matter what we try to install in them, it's, it's gonna be up to them what they learn from it, what they take from it, and what they do with it, you know, and you can just try to install, 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 install it, but, you know, as far, whether they're uh, young girls, young boys, you know, older girls, older boys, it's, it, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, 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 it's whatever they, you know, want to get out of it, what they take from it. And we just got to, as, as women, parents, mothers, fathers, you know, stick with it, keep installing it, and just hope that our young generation grow up, you know, to be positive, you know, do positive things and just pray for them and leave it down. You know, because it's, it's, they have their own minds. So we have teachers in the place, right? And I think that something that she said is that she, she they see her at home. But the kids are not really spending a whole lot of their time at home because when they get home, they do homework, they maybe chill for a little bit, and then they go to bed to go right back to that school, right? The school. I think that the teachers need to get a little bit more love because, like, okay, so in my brain, a doctor gets paid so much money, and teachers get paid zero. Zero. I want to put y'all out the line. Yeah. Yeah. But. Knows. The teachers don't get it. Mm, they don't get what they're worth. Our children are in with them a majority of the time. And they have what they're experiencing in that classroom 
what they're experiencing at those schools, that's what's influencing them. Not the couple of hours they see you hugging up Obey in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? You know, loving up. They see a, a healthy relationship. They're seeing Tracy and Dwayne and they fighting because Shaquan don't want to And you know, like that's what they're saying. It's hard for the teachers to do it too because you're exactly right. They spend more time in school than they do at home. But because all the kids have a cell phone, I just recently found out that my daughter's watching something, and I was like, I'm trying to figure out how to talk to her about it. But because, you know, um, they have the, the cell phone influence and all the other stuff, it's not even, teachers can't even influence the kids the same way because they look like, that's crazy. You know, and to be honest, I, I know y'all don't want to talk because they look like, please don't say anything. But to, I, I kind of say feel it, say bad. It. Well, no, because I, I want to know, because I talk to my students, and I have a 17 and a 12 year old, but young women, now, like the pressures that you guys have compared to like when I was in school, like I look at some of the stuff, like they happens to class, and I just that give people hug, like, oh my goodness, because it's just the pressures of making a mistake. Because I know growing up, we don't make mistakes, but if I made a mistake, it wasn't like broadcast because someone caught it on the phone and everyone talked about it. Because you can just type something real quick, and that everybody knows five minutes later they're looking at you sideways, like. I just, I feel the pressures of, of being a young woman right now are, um, are crazy and, and parents, teachers, older people can influence and help. But when you turn on the TV or you're on social media and all the stuff, it does influence. You know, everybody wants to fit in and all, it's just, it's a lot for them to, to deal with and process and unfortunately. Okay. Okay. Um, I just, I think a lot of times some of the mistakes that they make, I feel like the, the younger generation is having to heal much earlier from certain things that are happening to them. But a lot of times self-inflicted, but it's just this peer group, a lot of other things too, but it's just so by the time some of these kids, I teach ninth grade, so it's, by the time I get some of my ninth graders, like, they tell me stuff, and I'm like, it makes my whole, like, I was trying to figure out how to pay this bill, and do I don't even, like, that's just small compared to what the student just told me. Right, and I'm just like, you're 14. So I just, um, I don't know, it's a lot. I don't know where to start with, with that, how to fix that. So perfect, well, I'm, I'm a, okay. So kind of throwing it out there, you, you mentioned social media and, you know, media portrayal. And so, like, you know, what, what do we think about about that? What, what, what's being seen on social media, in the media, in, in music, and who are the popular, you know, musical artists that we see on TV and, and things. You know, like, we talk about like, like what's, what is a moment, right? And are young women growing and, 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 and it's been, you know, because it, listen, we have Lil' Kim. I was just about to say. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they like, the Lil' Kim, before that, I'm sure it was, I don't know, Dorothy Andridge, somebody, you know, you know, uh, you know, or the kid, you know, uh, or whatever, you know. So, but, you know, it's, it's so, I think it's potentially it's so more expansive now and so much more accessible now. You know, so like, you know, one, I guess two parts to the, to the question is, like, what, what do you feel like the, the real impact and what, what are the dangers that exist out there in these various forms of media that, that not, not only young people, because not only kids, because I think about, you know, women in their 20s and 30s and 40s are seeing these images and, and think that, oh, this is what, this is what I'm, I have to be in order to be, be considered a woman or successful or whatever, you know, but also then like, how do we, how do we uh, combat these, the, the, these images that exist out there, you know, to try to do that, like my mom said, like try to help create and produce and nurture, uh, you know, these uh, strong, confident young women. What, what, that's like, what can we as community do in that space? So. Be a community. Like, I think that's the word right there mm -hmm. because, like, integration just shut everything. Like, if that was the beginning of the end, um, in, in my eyes, and I think they do work. Well, we hear that, so what? So, we do that because we integrate it. Um, communicate. Right. Communicate and also, like, have, because if, if someone corrected my children, if they were out doing something, I would want a, another woman to say, like, is that is that the way you're going to talk or is that what you're going to do? But I feel like you know, we don't do that now. Do you talk to my child? You know? So but before it was community, and you knew if anybody, especially if it was somebody older, like said something to you, it shut it all down. It just shut it down because you had respect. But I feel like we don't have that sense of community um, 
anymore. And I feel like that's what we could fix a lot of these problems because kids would be more like on guard with how they're acting. They would feel, because I tell them like, you don't even code switch. They do, I know so much about you that I can't even look at you right now. You know? <laughs> it's like, I think with the community, if they have the respect them, we would, you know, they would develop this craziness. I want to tap in. Oh. Okay, I'm going to tap in on the, I don't know if kids need to feel on guard, but I think they need to feel supported. Because I think that aspect of the community, I just started working at an elementary school. It's um been maybe like six months now. I'm a media specialist, so just like seeing all of that, talking about community, talking about social media and technology, I definitely think there's something with kids where like, it, it's not as bad as we think it is, but we have to actually take action now at that like elementary yeah. level because they're like, as much as they're doing all these things, they're still very like, ooh, I wanna learn, they're engaged. Mm -hmm. There's that, there's still that like joy that, I see them bubbling up, they're like, Mrs. Solo, Mrs. Solo, they like run to me. So it's like, there's openness and there's room for it, but I think we need to be able to have those conversations. I think the part where they be talking about like, community-wise, like, it's, like, we gotta get the parents in the school. We gotta get like, I gotta be able to chop it up with you. Like, we working on the same team, but it's not, it's, the thing is like, we don't, we're, we are not working as if we're on the same team yeah. because we don't know what our common goals are. Mm -hmm. So like, First, you gotta have a vision, and it's at least say like, okay, let's walk that way, and then we can begin to, you know, huddle together and do something. But I feel like that's just what I've been seeing amongst the kids, and <sighs> there's a divide. Yeah, there's a divide a between the crazy. parents and the teachers. It didn't used to be like that. Yeah. So now it's like you, you can't really, you know, because the teachers are mad because the parents did X Y Z, and the parents are mad at the, the teachers. So. So I was able to arm her with, be proud that your hair is big and puffy. Don't be ashamed like I was when I was growing up where you're not black enough, you're not white, you're not this, you're not that. You're trying to figure out as a woman where you fit. So I think as an educator too, I go out of my way to recognize little girls that have natural hair or have clothes on their bodies and compliment them. That long dress looks beautiful. Or have a conversation where they're like, no, no boy's gonna wanna talk to me if, I, if my shorts aren't this short. And I'm like, all right, but what is he drawn to you for if your shorts are that short? So giving an alternative so that they understand you could be as beautiful as can be, but everyone doesn't have to see all your business. Like I gotta say, you don't gotta put all your business out there. So I think giving the next generation the, the power to say you don't, you're, you're beautiful when you don't have makeup on. You're beautiful when your hair is in a ponytail and you got to ask for a while. But if they don't hear those compliments, people you don't even know, when you go to the store, when you go to the mall, go up to a, a, a girl and just let them know you look beautiful. Because if they're seeing online that I have to have this and that and nobody lets them know when they are natural, and that's why I stopped getting weave sometimes because when I would get a, a long weave, everyone would come up to me in the mall, oh, you look so beautiful. Yeah. And then when I took my weave out and I had my afro back, nobody was stopping me. And I was like, all right, this is messing with my mind. And I'm an adult. I'm in my 30s feeling like, well, am I more beautiful when I have my, my wet wavy? So I had to kind of take a step back because if, if I'm feeling like that, 
in my 30s, imagine what 15 and 16 year olds feel like when they're only getting compliments when they have a full weave or they have long hair or they have short shorts or the chest is all out or the belly, all, you know what I mean? So I think part of the community is making sure that we're speaking to young ladies and recognizing them and letting them know I see you. I see your beauty in just the way you are so that they have something to compare to what they're seeing on social, social media or TV and music videos. And, and we can't be afraid, the opposite side of that is to check each other. Yeah. Like, you can't check another one and be like, hey, I noticed this, or, you know, we work together, I just want you to know, hey, be careful with this. Why are you talking? You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what kind of like, what Kanye was talking about, like, with the parents and teachers. It's like, you can't check anybody because that could be a lawsuit. Um, but one thing that, one thing that I saw when we talk about professionals, this is comedian that I, I loved her, she's so hilarious. Um, she was on Wild and I can't remember her name right now. But she was checking all the females, um, uh, like the Cardi B's and Meg, she's like, you know, we've been following them, trying to live our hot girl summer, and they live in like Sierra, they all boot up at home, <laughs> you know what I mean? They clean in, they cook in, but in their music, they talk, check this dude, kill this dude, Take this money from this dude. They're not doing that at all. And when she said, I was like, yes. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. like so true. Like, we have to keep telling our girls, and I tell my daughter this all the time. You know, it's a lot, right? Like, it's just entertainment. Right. This is what you need. And and when she doesn't receive something, I'm like, okay, I plan to see it. I hope another woman plans to see it. I hope another one. I can't control what she has, but that 20%, I'm going to just keep dousing her with it, pray that, she, that she'll take it, because I can't fight that. But at the same time, I, I even sent her that video. I was like, see, what I'm talking about. <laughs> they lie into you. You know, we need to be able to check each other so that these real women can be brought up. So ladies, y'all got something to say? I would love, would love to hear from, from y'all. Like, what, what do y'all think? What, 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 what? <laughs> What don't we know that y'all that y'all already know over, over that? What what misconceptions or thoughts about uh, you as young ladies that might we have that are wrong? So everything you think about y'all is true? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 Huh? Could you start like what grade y'all in? Like where, where y'all at in school right now? Oh, I'm huh? I've been nine. Nine grade. I don't 
I didn't learn from my mom. So I would say my grandma and my niece. You say her grandma, my name, her, my grandma her mother's and my mother, and me, her father's oh, mother. Because mm -hmm. my grandma's in a happy relationship, and then Manny's in a happy relationship. So I learned from them too. I learned from them too. Yeah, I learned from them too. She learned from her parents, because her parents go together. Yeah, yeah so they're sisters. Y'all get them together. Y'all learn from music? I don't like I don't like this with music. I'm a R&B Michael Jackson fan. So, so are you gonna put what they're saying on R&B songs? Nope. No. No. Nope. But you said they had yes. But me? Yes. Yeah. When I said it, you said yes. Yeah. You took her from music. Yeah. 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 Y
that you could give and you could use these young ladies as, as an example or you know for those who are a little older you, you, could give, you could give these young ladies as an example or anybody you could give it to everybody or a piece of advice you know or or um just something um a nugget because because i'm one of the things about uh, these sessions for me is about about solutions or about you know actions forward right and so we talked about some things we talked about building community we talked about um letting young people know their love and their different, their different perspectives and so if there's just something you know maybe you had an experience and you want to just offer a moment right because here it is here's this moment right now so what you say may may end up being that thing may end up you know uh being a nugget that is planted or, or seed or I plant nuggets a seed that is planted and uh it can grow so uh i just love if, if we can go around and take just take a moment something that you've learned or that you want to impart or even if, if you don't know something maybe you have a question that's that's that you want to put out in, in the atmosphere and if you feel like i'm going to say that's cool just look at the moment no pressure all right sure um, take time to look inward and identify some of your whys behind your thoughts and your actions so you can heal. And um, most importantly, every emotion is valid. So focus on moving through emotions like water in a river rather than stuck in one emotion like rock. Um, I would say finding a way to define what success means for yourself um, and using that as the barometer for how you want to live in the world. So sometimes it's success looks like a certain thing, but you can also think about what it feels like and if you want to feel and experience joy or ease or peace or rest um, in that process. So I would just say be able to define what success is for yourself. <laughs> I guess for me, it's a big thing that's um, challenged me and helped me to grow in life is to not be afraid to be the exception, um, to just not have that fear to be myself because allowing myself to be different, to be that person that's different, to think differently, think outside the box, um, it's challenged other people and it's allowed other people to, the, um, to feel okay with being themselves. You know, it's also helped I feel like even being, you talk a lot about being a black woman. Um, I used to perm my hair when I was younger. And, cause I grew up in a household that was like, my mom was white and my dad was black. So the, my mom didn't know how to do my hair. So I, I had to kind of figure it out. And so back then it was popular to do, to just perm your hair. And so when I decided at like a really young age to kind of just let my natural hair go, I was the one of the only few that had natural hair, so a lot of people were like looking at me funny for a long time, but then by allowing myself to be the exception, it allowed other black girls, you know, to be able to have their natural hair out as well. So just allow yourself to be the exception. Um, I'm thinking in terms of the people you surround yourself with, especially as a woman and all of these rules of society you have to deal with. Just remember that those who are used to chaos will find peacefulness boring. Yeah. And you shouldn't let yourself ever think something's wrong with me because these people are not, or doing something that I'm not doing or, you know, things like that. Definitely just be aware of who you surround yourself with and what they bring to your life. Um, I think it's important to remember the real you, especially when you're looking out at all of this social media and stuff and letting this stuff um, influence you. Remember who you are. Um, remember that you're not always on stage. Remember to love you for who you are and not for the person that you feel you need to present to other people. Um, because if you don't love you, are, it's going to be very difficult for you to find someone that can show you the kind of love that you deserve as the real person you are. Because once you show the real you, they're looking for the person that you pretended to be. So be in love with yourself. And uh, 
Power comes with your power comes from within, um, and know that you can always make choices. Uh, mine would be everything is subject to change. Uh, if if you're in a great situation, enjoy it, give thanks, and if you're in a tough situation, go through it. Learn what you need to learn, so you ain't got to go through that thing again. <laughs> and then give thanks, still. You know what I'm saying? In every, in all situations, give thanks. But always know that everything is subject to change. Mm -hmm. Listen. Always listen. The answer's always there. I would say, wow, so many different thoughts came in my head. I was you guys were all speaking. 
Um, but I would say to own your emotions. That was my original thought. To own your own emotions and don't let anyone decide. Like anyone to, uh, some, don't allow other people's actions to determine how you are going to feel. Mm-hmm. So I would say just to own that emotion and then also um, accept yourself for who you are, which I've heard a couple people say. Mm-hmm. So yeah, accept yourself for who you are and your emotions. I would say to validate yourself and don't look for validation from others. Yes. And don't allow yourself to ever feel that you need to validate yourself for someone else. And so with today being all about women, I'll, I'll end it and let the woman's word be the last one that we just heard there. So thank you all for sharing in this experience. Um, we're going to move over so you guys, Connie has it all set up for you right behind. So you're going to bring your chair over to those tables so you can go paint a little bit. And we're all going to do that right now. So we can bring your chair over there. Right. This one goes out to my queens. You know what I mean? Like a queen, a queen, pa femme we con sa chérie. If you're gonna love me, how you love me, boy, just make sure you love me right. Because I am the lady. Okay, so you guys probably want to set the cups back just a little bit so we don't uh, spill anything. Uh, my name is Connie McKnight, my artist name is Constance Carvana. I'm a local artist and I'm also an educator and a whole bunch of other things, but. Art is my passion. I love creating artistic experiences for people. Um, I believe that art deals. It's a way for us to express ourselves, to kind of start conversations that need to take place. So we're gonna work on a collaborative piece today. So, um, and I have some extra canvases too, but you'll find some canvases all spread around the table. So the more you do, the less I have to do, because I'm gonna do these, or you guys are gonna do these, and I'm gonna glue them up here. And I'm gonna be writing some stuff um, as we're all working together, but. If anyone feels like they want to paint another one, I have some extra and I will put that up here too. Um, so what we're doing today is we're reflecting. So we're reflecting on this entire experience. So we um, got to see some performances and we had our discussion. There's some artwork hanging around we can reflect on. So what I would like for you to do is paint your square. If you're gonna love me, how you love me, boy, just make sure you love me right. your wine and your dime take me for a good time introduce me to your mama call me when you want to plan forever it's not just a physical thing mentally boy you have to stimulate you better know say i'm a lady oh baby boy you know i ain't in a rush let's take it slow take it Thank you to everyone who came out to our Mojo Cypher sessions honoring women. I wouldn't be here without a woman. You wouldn't be here without a woman. So we must always honor, respect, and love women. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. See you next time in Mojo Cypher sessions, Harper Girls Project.